So we're here at Microsoft Build 2019 in Seattle. I'm Anisha Pindoria, a senior program manager in the Azure DevOps team. And on stage with me, we've got Gopi. Gopi, do you want to introduce yourself and yes. tell us what you work on? I am Gopi Nath. I'm group program manager in Azure DevOps team. I primarily own Azure Pipelines. And inside Azure Pipelines, I take care of all the continuous delivery and deployments to Azure. Cool. Wow. So this week, there have been quite a lot of um, announcements um, that that Azure DevOps has announced um, during uh, the keynote, um, especially in Azure Pipelines, correct? So I would love to uh, dig a little bit deeper into some of those announcements like the YAML CI-CD improvements that we've made as well as the Kubernetes deployments as well. Um, so let's just, you know, just crack on. Let's just get started with uh, uh, YAML Pipelines. So um, tell me a little bit more about the improvements we've made there and why, why have we done this? Okay. So we actually shipped YAML-based CI solution nine months ago. And one of the key feedback we have been getting is, you know, how do I do CD using YAML? Because, you know, if I'm having YAML solution, I can just check in my entire build process, deployment process into the source repo. And, you know, it can just continuously go through the same application process for me to do a PR anytime there is a change process that needs to be done. And this is a lot more compliant. And we had significant request for supporting YAML-based CD. Now, you know, when we looked at what is the right way to do, we just looked at YAML CI. How do I just extend it appropriately to single stage to multi-stage? That's the work that we have done. That's what we have announced it. Right. Along with this, one of the stuff we were looking is, you know, how do we just optimize this YAML pipeline for Kubernetes? So those are the two big features that we have announced in the keynote. Great. So you mentioned Kubernetes. Um, those folks that don't know what Kubernetes is, I would love to, you know, just get a quick overview, maybe in a nutshell, around okay. what Kubernetes is. You know, I think you know, one of the stuff as part of the digital transformation, everybody is trying to migrate their existing solutions to container-based solution. Because container gives like an isolation that is needed for people to execute it easily. And also it is an easy artifact that can be transformed and then deployed to any environment. Now, once the, the people started using containers, they started having a lot more containers. Now, how do I manage these containers? Multiple container image that gets generated, that gets right. run. How do I manage it? Then Kubernetes you know, was born to orchestrate all the container images and then run them appropriately. Okay. So what we are trying to do is, you know, Microsoft itself in Azure, there is a AKS. AKS is Azure Kubernetes Service. So as part of the YAML pipeline, when we were building our multi-stage solution, we were looking, how do we optimize the solution starting with any Kubernetes solution? That's where we started. Okay, that makes sense. So all of this sounds fantastic, and I'm, I'm just dying to, you know, see a demo on how do you get started with YAML CI CD with Kubernetes. So can you just show us how to get started? Yep, awesome. Okay. Great. So this is my GitHub repo. And you know you can just see that this is a Node.js application that is available. And there is a Docker file that is there. I'm just opening the Docker file so that you can see it. And very simple repo. I'm just you know, pulling in Alpine image. And uh, I mean, I'm doing an NPM install. I'm running an NPM test. And you can also see that I'm actually exposing a port called 3000. And I'll explain you more about you know, why I'm just telling you this at a later point. But a simple Node.js application that is available, what I will do is, how do I take this application, and I know this is a container application, and automatically build, deploy to Kubernetes. Like one of the problem that uh, you know, I'm hearing from customers is Kubernetes has lots of concepts. Now, do people need to understand those concepts when they are configuring pipeline? We are trying to make it super easy you know, for customers who already know about pipelines or who already know about their application mm -hmm. and containerized. Without understanding any of the Kubernetes concepts in less than two minutes or with four steps, just take it all the way to any Kubernetes. Wow. Concept. That's what I would like to show. Wow, cool. Let's do it. So, you know, now I'll just switch to Azure pipelines. What I shown you was GitHub and then that repository can be in GitHub or it can be in Azure repos or it can be in SVN. It does not matter. You bring your container-based application to Azure Pipelines. We will provide this wizard, which will take you to deploy to any Kubernetes cluster. We are today optimized for Azure. That's nice. So same repo that I have shown is showing up here. I select that repo. And now what, it, what we are doing is we actually analyze that application. Now, based on that analysis, as I said, it is a Node.js application. We actually suggest you only the Node.js templates that are relevant to you, right? 
If it is a .NET, then you will get only the .NET based templates. We have this intelligent that is built into it where we will analyze the code repo and then bring you what, what's more relevant to you. In addition to that, on the top, you can see that I'm suggesting you, hey, do you just want to do Docker CI or do you want to do Docker CI and CD as well? So this is the recommended template and those are the ones that will just bubble up. If I don't have the Docker file in my repo, then you can just use any of these. If you have a Docker file, then we optimize it and then say, do you just want to do CI or do you want to take all the way to the Kubernetes service? So in this particular case, I would like to take it to the Kubernetes service. So I just select, you know, this template. Then, you know, we ask you which subscription that you want to use. And based on the subscription, literally we ask you three more inputs before we generate everything that is needed for you. Which cluster you want me to deploy to? I have a cluster that is already available. And it asks me, do you want to create a new namespace or an existing namespace? And tell me where should I push the image? The reason why we take the container registry is we take the image, we build the image, we push it into this container registry. It will be available at later point any time for you to refer. And we also establish connection between this registry and the EKS cluster. So any time the image got updated, it will get pushed to the EKS registry. I think that's it. Those are the only three inputs that you need to give. No this more is, inputs needed. This is it? This that's is, it. wow, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty nice and right. so simple and easy, right? And you can actually see the service port. Now, this is the port that I showed you in the Docker file. We actually not only just identified what kind of application it is Node.js, because we find Docker file, we actually inspected the Docker file, and then some of the contents we are showing you. Now, what we do is when I actually click on validate and configure, when it creates the Kubernetes cluster, and inside the Kubernetes cluster, all the files that get generated appropriately, we will tie into the port of 3000 to this port so that you know it can be accessed outside too. So what did this do? As part of this, this is what we call it as a multi-stage pipeline. So you can see that it generated this YAML file automatically to you. You don't need to spend time figuring it out what all I need to do, the YAML, how does the YAML syntax will look like. We will generate the basic YAML file. There are two stages that exist. That's the reason we are calling it as multi-stage pipeline. Okay. Until now in the YAML CI, you always were just doing only build with any number of yeah. jobs. Yep. But now you can do build and deploy. And we are, you know, you can see in this basic template two stages, but you can have any number of stages. You can just build. You can deploy to your first set of customers. You can deploy to your second set of customers. So you can build multiple stages that are needed into it. So this I, is all generated for you. This is all generated. You don't need for to make you. any changes or anything like that. You don't need. Would to you make, need to ever make changes? No, you okay. don't need to do you know any changes. The same thing will work as is for you. And what we are doing inside this is you can see that I'm just doing a Docker build and push, and after that I'm just publishing some of the artifacts that are needed. I'm downloading the artifacts here and I'm running the Kubernetes task to pick the built image and deploy to cluster. Let me click save and run. Now when I click on save and run, here it shows some more magic. The first file I showed you was the pipelines.yaml that we generated. Yep. We also generated two other files. These are Kubernetes manifesto files. Okay. So this is where we are trying to you know, teach you saying that you don't need to learn about the Kubernetes uh, um, you know, concepts. But we generate these two files, and then these two files are available in your source repo. Once I commit and run, and then if you want to do any modifications at later point, whenever you learn more about Kubernetes, mm. then you can actually just go change those files to scale up, scale down, yeah. and you know anything that is needed. So you make it really simple, really easy for us to just pick it up and go. Yes. Okay. Less than two minutes, four steps done. Wow. Now you know here it is executing the multi-stage pipeline. While it is executing, we also updated entire our Azure Pipelines UI. You can actually just see that, you know, if I click on it, it tells me live progress on what's happening mm. in the build. Now it is actually building the image. Now as part of that, it tells, you know, I'm just pushing the image. Once I, you know, pull the image, push the image, and then build everything. And then, you know, once it is done, it will publish the pipeline artifacts. In the meanwhile, let me just show you a few more in the, in the new UI. You can actually just, you know, tells you that which repo it is coming from. Okay. This is the repository that we have selected, which branch, and it also tells you the code. You know, what timestamp my code has taken in. If I actually just right click and then open in a new link tab, it will directly take you to, you know, your code repo that is available. Right.
right? So all of these built in and available. Instead of waiting for it to complete, I'll just show you the one that is completed. So you can actually just to see the exact same things, master repo. And if you have tests that are run, we will automatically detect all the tests. If you see in the pipeline, I have never defined saying that, hey, you know, run the test and mm. upload. If the tests are run, we will automatically detect and then upload all the tests. If I click on the test, it will show you a nice report. Wow. In my case, everything is passing. But if you have failures, it will highlight, it will show yeah. you the code. And uh, here it is showing you the two stages that I talked about. One was the build stage. Second one was the deploy stage. And the deploy job is actually, you know, downloading the artifacts and then it is deploying you to the Kubernetes cluster that exists. And the UI changes that you've made, it just, it just makes things so much more easier to understand and read straight away, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. So Perfect. that's the end to end of, you know, YAML based pipelines that we have created. We had CI only yep. and here is how we expanded it to CD as well. Great. I saw, a, I saw a little bit about environments. Can you tell me more about environments with Kubernetes? Right. Okay. So let me just switch back. So so, so what it does in this case is, now you can see that there are three tabs that are there. One is the test tab and then the environments tab. Mm -hmm. So environment is a new concept that we are introducing into the pipeline. So until now, you know, we used to call our product as developers, DevOps product, but most of the stuff was optimized for developers. First time now ops guys get to see and get to control. So in the, as part of the pipeline, we actually created an object called environments object. Okay. Now, this environment object has its own security permissions. It has its own, um, you know, retention periods that you users can set. And now if I click on this view environment, it will just now take me to the full environment object. Because the product that we deployed was a Kubernetes one, it now shows me all the Kubernetes resources that are involved in Fantastic. This. Like, and if I just to show you the deployments, it, you know, if I click on the job that is deployed to, it shows me what all commits that are involved. So one of the key questions, so because this is the first pipeline that we have set up, mm. so it just shows me all the commits that are there, not just the commits, it also shows you if you have associated with the work items. Okay. And the work items can come from GitHub issues or it can come from you know, Azure boards. Now, how is this helping? I think you know, there are two key scenarios that I'll tell you. I think you know, today one of the you know, uh, problem that the developers have is, is my commit made it to the East US region yeah. deployment, right? Now, they don't need to ask this question to anybody. They can go to this environment, assume this is their production environment that is there. They can run the latest job that is there, click on it, go to the commits, and then they will really see right there if their commit is, sorry, I'll, let me just click it again. I just press the back button. Go to the environment, go to this deployment tab, go to the job, click on the commits. In this particular case, it's all mine. But if my commit is showing up, that means it has reached the customer region that you are looking right. for. Okay. That, that's one scenario. The second scenario is for release managers. Like, you know, most of the times they go back and forth saying that, hey, you know, is your feature checked in? Is your, is your you know, bug checked in? Or is your, yeah. you know, features reached the customers? They can literally take, you know, here I have only one list, assume a list of items that are available. They can just look at this list of items and then publish right. the release notes more easily. Perfect. So okay. that's the key environment concepts. But I'll now get into no more magic of what all we'll do with respect to the Kubernetes as well. Okay. Right. If I just click on the, the resources, you can actually see the payments here. I click on the payments. Now it actually shows me what is running inside the Kubernetes cluster. Right. Here are the services that we just got deployed. It tells me the health of the pods that are running, and I can actually drill deeper into each of the pods. And for each of the pods, I can look at the logs that are, you know, running. In this case, it is a successful one, so there is not much. I assume if there are failures, it will tell you to, you know, debug the failures more easier. It will tell you what exactly is the Kubernetes YAML that is getting deployed onto this as well. So, from ops perspective and the devs perspective, we are bringing them very close together so that you know you can actually see from application perspective what changes mm -hmm. you have done and in addition to that what deployment that you have done and how exactly your deployment is performing here great perfect so um we're a little bit short on time but i've got a couple more things that i would love to just ask you um when is all of this going to be available because i'm dying to get my hands on it <laughs> yeah so i think you know we just uh, you know enabled this to everybody i think it is rolling out by friday okay all of these features should be available to everyone if you guys just go click on preview right. features, you will find multi-stage pipelines. 
by end of this week it should be available you opt into this yeah you will get all the features. fantastic and um i mean so much stuff has come out this week from azure pipelines i mean all of this stuff is exciting but what's next in pipelines like you know there are you know few more features that we are working on based on the customer request one is about you know the, the yaml yaml based pipelines are helping them meet the compliance requirements but they are saying you know how do i just do approvals inside yep. it so we are trying to get the approvals inside it and the environment that i have shown you is optimized today for kubernetes we want to you know make it available for vms and other resources and we are also working on multiple artifacts how do i just consume any artifact into right. this yaml pipeline and take it forward okay fantastic well i mean we just we just covered just the tip of everything that we've announced here right, right? but um everyone can find everything on our uh, devops blog uh, by going to ak.msdevopsblog and you'll find all of the announcements that we've made this week uh, for azure devops including azure pipelines and uh, check out our docs page if you want to get started and just get going with everything so thanks again gopi really thank appreciate you. your time thank you thank you